Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 12th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own scary survival horror game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll cover adding a fading in screen, and we'll also play around with the lighting a little bit more and adding in some uh, models for lighting. Remember to subscribe, click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload, and feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. We also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel, and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So, I feel that this tutorial might be a pivotal point in how our game starts to look. Now, the idea is that we want to create a fade-in screen that will encompass the entirety of our screen to kind of fade in and just give a slow illusion of going into our game, as you would expect to see in a lot of survival horror games. In order to do that, we need to use the canvas. So, previously we've had these objects here, and we have used raw image before to use as our little cursor. We're going to use the same kind of mechanics to create the fade in. So go to game object, go to UI, let's go to raw image. Let's name this fade in. And with this, let's change the color to black. And let's set the anchoring position to stretch because we want it to encompass the entire screen. Uh, so when we've done that, let's double click on fade in and then zoom out. See, it's just a small black square. <clears throat> let's now set zero, 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 zero on the left, top, right, and bottom. And if we go to game view, You'll see a little line there, but don't worry about that too much. That little line will still appear whenever we try and play it within the engine. When we build our final version of the game, the executable, that line will not be there. If you don't feel comfortable like that, you could always just kind of use the rec tool and drag over so you know that it will cover the entirety of the screen. Like I say, it will still appear just within the game engine. So <clears throat> we now have this. How do we make it so as it fades? Well, we can use something called animation. Yes, I know we've used animation in various other projects, and you think of animation as something moving. Well, technically, an animation can be used to change something as well as move it. So let's go to our Assets folder. Let's right-click, Create, Folder, and call this Animation. And within this folder, we now need to create the animation specifically for our fade in screen. So make sure we have it clicked, then click on animation. And this is a way to create animation in the simplest little terms. Click on create, and we'll call this fade in, and it'll present what looks like a timeline. We now need to press the record button. And what we do is we set different states of the object at different keyframes. We're working in 60 frames a second by default, so we need to set the very first zero keyframe. And the first keyframe is going to be completely black as it is now. So if we click over here on the color and change this down here, which is the alpha, which is how translucent, transparent, and opaque an object is, we set this to 255. So make sure you retype 255. Don't just leave it as it is and expect the keyframe to be set. You'll know you've done it right if you click X and see these two dots right here. That now means that the very first keyframe, i.e. the first state the game object is going to be in, is how it looks exactly right now. As we're working in 60 frames a second, we need to determine how long we want to fade in for. Do we want one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds? I'm gonna use two seconds, so I'm gonna to go to frame 120. Like I say, 60 frames a second. If you want one frame, it's 60. 3 frames, 180, 4 frames, 240, and so on. And what we need to do now is change the opacity on the alpha and change it to 0. So it looks exactly like this by the 120th frame, i.e. 2 seconds. So click X on the color, press the record button once again, and if we press play, we should be able to see it fade into our game over 2 seconds, and it will keep fading in, fading in, fading in. Like I say, it works. That's exactly what we need. We need to now stop it re repeatedly fading. So we can go to project, click on fade in, and then untick loop time. What is loop time? Loop it. 
basically just loops over and over and over. We don't want to do that, so we've unticked it. So now if we press play and have a look, it'll just do it the once. Excellent. So now this is where uh, we use some lighting to change how our game looks, because it doesn't look very scary or survival -y or horror -y just yet. So I'm going to double click on cube just to zoom in. And I'm also going to turn off the canvas because as I've zoomed out a little bit there, you can see that the canvas is now getting in the way of development. So if we click canvas and untick up here, it just prevents us accidentally clicking on the canvas and doing things that we shouldn't really be doing. So what we need to do now is I'm going to enclose this area of our game because I don't want things to, you know, look like this. I want them to look enclosed, creepy, scary, all that kind of stuff. So I am going to take this, hold control, press D, and just move it into a different position just here. So while I enclose this now, what I will do is I will talk to you about why lighting is so important when it comes to uh, games, especially this style of game. So lighting can either make or break several games. Could you imagine something like um, the new Silent Hill 2 if it didn't have all the lighting in place? Could you imagine if, you know, something like Ratchet and Clank had no lighting? It would look terrible. So regardless of what game you're trying to make, lighting is such a vital part of what you're creating. There are many different ways of creating lighting, but you'll spend, or you should be spending, a lot of time on how your lighting looks. Always try and refine it as best you can. You can never spend too much time on lighting, trust me. So now as I've enclosed all of this level, it looks like a hallway. And what I want to do is turn off the global illumination. The reason being is because it has too much of an impact inside when we don't really want it to. In order to do that, we need to go to Window, go to Rendering, go to Lighting, and then click on Environment. Here you've got the skybox material, which is this default skybox that you can see here. And you could change aspects about it. You know, you could change the actual skybox itself. For now, though, I want to completely turn it off. So I'm going to click the little radius button next to it, scroll up to none and click it. And if I close and close the lighting tab and go back to here, you can see that's how much of an impact the lighting now has on our game. It looks a little bit more refined. It looks a little bit more survival horror-y. Uh, what I do want to do is turn off the point light because I feel that that's not relevant at the moment. However, the game is now too dark. But let's play around a little bit with the lighting. Let's adjust what things look like. So I'm going to go to my objects folder and I'm going to import this ceiling lamp. And you can get this if you head to the pinned comment or the description. Click on the link uh, and you can download it for free. So let's import our lamp into the game. So drag and drop. And let's increase the size. I'm going to have it as five, five and two. I'm going to drag it into the ceiling, which is around about there. And now the spotlight that we have, I'm going to drag onto that light so it all stays connected. And let's now zero, zero, zero the position and adjust this light so as we don't have this big circle in the middle. What this is, is the light is now projecting above the actual lamp itself and it's projecting this as a shadow. So we just need to drag it down to about there. So now it looks like this light is shining down from our lamp. Let's move the whole lamp into the middle of the corridor. And on the spotlight itself, let's um, let's add a bit more to the range. So let's make it expand a little bit more and change the spot angle to probably about there, maybe, just so as it covers a bit more of the area. Uh, you could change the intensity if you wanted and have it really bright, or you could have it lower if you wanted. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to keep it as one just for now. Uh, you can play around with the render mode if you want and set it as important or not important or keep it as auto. Uh, not important, kind of. You could think of it as inverting what the light would do. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend using that. I'd either use auto or important. Uh, culling mask everything. So we don't need to use any kind of culling here. It is fine as it is. 
Let's change the light color just slightly to a kind of a very slight yellow orangey color. I guess you could change it to blue as well. Blue is a very common color in this sort of thing. So next thing we need to do is we need to illuminate this section over here. And we could easily do that by taking our lamp, Ctrl, press D, and drag it over into another position. So maybe round about there. And once again, let's take that, hold control, press D, and bring the lighting. Uh, and let's put it over here so as we can see our door a little more. There we go. That looks a little bit better, I think. So let's press play and have a look how the lighting looks within our game now. So it's definitely given it more of a... Um, I can only press save then. <laughs> Yes, I know. I know how to save. Um, so yeah, it gives it more of a survival-y, horror -y kind of look. And now let's uh, let's try and open the door. So yeah, that's kind of cool. But what I think, the light needs to be a little bit closer to our door there, just to kind of give it a bit more. But this is what I mean about how you play around with lighting. Work with your lighting. Try to make it, you know, how you want the game to look. It's It's all good and well copying exactly what I do. But you don't want to try and make it look exactly like this. You want to make your own variation of it. Anyway, at this point, we have some spooky lighting in. Yes, I know this bit is all exposed and we can see into the blue void uh, because we're going to develop that a little bit more. Next tutorial, what I want to try and do is I want to add in a candle that we can pick up and then walk around with. Uh, it's fairly easy, but it will also enable us to add more lighting to our game as well. And you can be you'll be able to see how the lighting works when you move the candle around different areas of the level, different places get illuminated, and that's gonna be a lot of fun to put together. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series, and I will see you next time.